Hey, Chloe Leverett would be 19 years old. Her brother Gage Daniel would be 17. The siblings were last seen in 2012 at their grandparents' home the night it burned to the ground in a deadly fire. Investigators found the remains of the grandparents, Bubba and Molly McLaren, and the family's two pets, but the two siblings' remains were never found. The children's mother, Cheryl Daniel, is hanging on to hope they're still out there. I feel them. I feel, I can feel their, the bond I had with them. I feel that. I can still feel that they are alive. Where they're at and who has them, I, I don't know. What the situation is, I don't know. And um, my prayer is that they're, they are together. I don't know that. The TBI had enough evidence to issue an Amber Alert for the missing siblings. It's still active today. Dire upgrades needed across TSU's campus. Students say they're the ones left suffering. If the state were to give us the money that we are owed, we could do so much more with the school. And it could benefit so many students. The need for on-campus improvements and TSU's ignored requests for its grant money is nothing new. Jeff Carr demonstrated decades ago in the 80s. All these years later, he's still one of the many voices that have so far gone unheard. I would say to any leader who has any power, any politician who has any influence, any check writer who has any common sense to simply sign your name, write the check, and let's make sure that Tennessee State has the equity that it deserves. TSU's desperate need for financial support has now hit a critical level. The school saw its largest freshman enrollment in the university's history. Carr says he's proud so many people are coming to the university, but calls out the state for its lack of planning and structure. Brandon Putbreeze with the state Senate Democratic Caucus says public officials need to fulfill their promise, but admits it will take some time. The funding is really cold comfort to students right now who feel like they're left out in the lurch. The issue of the half a billion dollars has not been completely resolved yet. Houston has been able to cut its homeless population in half since implementing this model. It's something Nashville hopes will also work here. Almost 26,000 people. That's how many folks leaders in Houston have been able to house since 2012. Before that, the city had the sixth highest homeless population in the country. Our partners were not using um, our dollars effectively. We were sending a lot of money back to the federal government. Anna Roush works for Houston's Coalition for the Homeless, one of the city's lead organizations credited with housing the homeless. Houston's been fortunate to get federal funding and permanent supportive housing to really make a dent, all by using the housing first model. You don't insist that they learn to swim while they're drowning. You, you bring them to shore, you save them, and then they can learn to swim. Sam Tamberis is considered the father of this housing first model. Essentially, it's the idea of housing someone first, then focusing on the issues that might have led to that person becoming homeless. Nashville would also implement this housing first model. While our population is much smaller than Houston's, housing is a challenge right now in Music City. While we asked the mayor for an on-camera interview, his office gave us the consultant working directly with Mayor John Cooper. In talking with Houston, organizations told me there was adequate housing to put these folks. Right now, we know Nashville doesn't have enough housing, so what's the plan to address that challenge? Their housing is slowed down, so that's where the interim gap housing comes in. That's where the $25 million in gap financing comes in because that is aimed at providing units quickly. Houston receives a lot of funding, whether privately or through the federal government. Do you feel 50 million is enough money to have a large impact here in Nashville? It is enough to have a large impact. It is enough to serve as a catalyst, but we need more. Now, Metro Council will vote on Mayor John Cooper's $50 million ask on October 4th. Nashville's $50 million plan would include the following, $25 million for affordable housing units, $9 million for supportive services, another $9 million for temporary housing, and $7 million to continue partnering with landlords in addition to competitive grants.